connected via the Ethernet port to a switch. This is uh, just a hub, a switch, it's not a router. Uh, and I have the same switch connected to my laptop and to the ECC, the, the receiving device for the system. Uh, that way I can bring up the MTU's user interface page and double check my settings. My MTU is basically connected at this point other than addressing the wires. So I'm going to move over to my laptop and I'm running Windows 7 and for what we call a direct connection, which means you're not on the local area network, uh, you can access the devices at their default IP addresses. And to do so, you would set up your network as so. You can see I'm going to my control panel, network and sharing center, change adapter settings, and local area connection. Now we've got a more detailed video on setting up a what we call direct connect uh, that you can take a look at if you need to. But you can see this only takes me a few seconds. I'm selecting properties and internet version protocol 4. And I'm selecting use the following IP address. This is what you enter here for IP address 192.168.7.1. If you just tab past the subnet mask, it'll autofill with 255, 255, 255, And in the default gateway, you'll put in the same number as the IP address, 192.168.7.1. And click OK to save. OK. Now, through the switch, the MTU and the ECC will be available at their IP addresses, their default IP addresses. And so I will note in the address bar that you want to put in the IP of the MTU, 192.168.7.3. And that brings up what we call the MTU's user interface page or UI page. Uh, this page is also important if you're using a another configuration other than the default, which is three phase four wire Y. You're using another configuration. You would select it there. If you were using Rogowski coils, you would select it here. You'd select that checkbox. Uh, what we're going to do is go to our stats page by selecting stats. Several things to note on the MQ stats page. We have the voltage, the current, active power, and apparent power. The voltage has a decimal place that's not shown, so this is 121.9 volts phase to neutral on each phase, 23.4 amps on this phase. And what's of most importance to us right now is we want to verify that we have a positive number for active power for each phase. Assuming you don't have generation going on in this panel, which we don't, the active power should always be positive. We also are checking that we have a reasonable number for the power factor. There's a decimal place not shown here. So while 97% power factor would be reasonable, the, the active power number is negative. So we see on all three phases that we need to check our CT connections. First thing we do is make sure that the polarity is correct, the red dot facing toward the utility. I've already done that, so we know that the CT connections are not matching the voltage as far as A, B, and C phase. I'm just going to unplug all three of these, and you can do this with the MTU under power because there's minimal current on these connectors from the CT. And I'm going to take the connector that's in the A phase and I'm just going to move it to the B phase and see what I see there. Now my active power went positive as you can see 5918 and my apparent power is at 93 percent which is typical. Okay so I'm pretty sure that's the B phase. Since we now have a positive number for active power on phase B or phase 2. We will just try the CT connection in the phase A, see if it's correct. 
Okay. We see that we now have a positive number for active power, phase A, as well as a reasonable power factor for both A and B. And we know the next connection is going to be phase C. Which it is, and we have an active power positive for each phase. So we know that our CT connections are now matching our voltage connections for phase A, B, and C.